Hey everyone, welcome to the Mobile User Acquisition Show. In the Mobile User Acquisition Show, we talk about how to use mobile user acquisition strategies to grow your app quickly and capital efficiently. The Mobile User Acquisition Show is presented by me, Shamant Rao, mobile growth leader and founder and CEO of the mobile growth consulting firm, Rocketship HQ. Each episode includes strategies, tips, and pointers from the leading edge of mobile user acquisition that you can use to unlock tremendous growth for your app in a sustainable and capital efficient manner. Today's is a special episode. It features a blog post that we wrote for our friends at Feature. Uh, check them out at feature.com, P-H-I-T-U-R-E.com slash mobile growth stack. Uh, they've done some great work around retention, lifecycle marketing, onboarding, and all that good stuff. So definitely check them out, feature.com slash mobile growth stack. Today's episode is an article we wrote for them called The Problem with Traditional Retention Metrics and Three Metrics That Fill the Gap. The retention, we know, is critical to an app or product's long-term financial health. Mathematically, the arguments are incontrovertible, including the fact that upstream retention metrics have a cascading effect on downstream retention metrics. We know, for instance, that a small retention win, even about 5%, can result in a massive disproportionate improvement in LTVs. That said, the standard manner of re measuring retention involving D1, D7, D30 retention numbers doesn't always capture the complete reality of how users are retained by your app. While these metrics can tell you how many users returned one, seven, or even 30 days after they installed, highlighting the potential of your app to engage users in the short term and long term, a big shortcoming of this paradigm is its inability to track how your app is engaging existing users or re resurrected users. DX retention does not evaluate how your app engages existing users. That's the truth. Uh, let's look at this with, an, with the help of an example. Let's say you run a sale on the 4th of July. Uh, what happens if your sale is a huge hit with your currently active users who return in droves and engage more deeply than they did before, but your newly acquired users, perhaps who first came into your app a week ago or three days ago, they're just not deep in, enough in the funnel to engage with it. Uh, that might happen if the 4th of July sale only is active for users who are past level 30, level 50 or something, and just the new users don't get to see it. Similarly, what happens when your sale brings back users who have previously lapsed? Depending on when these users installed, you may see an increase in D21, D34, D221 retention, which, given that it's spread across very many cohorts, is going to be almost impossible to spot and evaluate in a DX paradigm. Just as importantly, your D21, D271 retention and whatnot does not tell you if your app continues to be compelling to users after they return. It just measures whether they're coming back or not. So in other words, if your 4th of July sale brought them back, you should be asking if your app is going to continue to engage them after they've returned, not just whether they've come back, right? Or you do, you know, if they take advantage of the sale and never come back again, then your product's not doing as good a job of retaining your returning users. These are the essential questions that your DX retention number simply does not do a good job of surfacing just because it is focused on how a cohort of new users progresses through the uh, through their life cycle, but it does not directly reflect the health of existing or recurrent users. Considering that the vast majority of users of most apps are existing users and not new ones, this is a significant blind spot for traditional DX retention numbers. But what might be the best ways to get the full picture? Below, I explore a couple of metrics that can fill the gap here. The solution for 
tracking current and resurrected users is a set of metrics that I discovered and found and learned when I worked at Zynga uh, that provided a perfect solution to this problem. These metrics were a very useful lens through which to look at your user base to get a more nuanced understanding of what is happening with them. This set of metrics is the trifecta of weekly retention metrics that we called CUR, NUR, and RUR. CUR is the current user return rate, NUR is the new user return rate, RUR is the returning user return rate. All three of these metrics help complete the picture painted by the DX retention numbers. Let's break it down a bit more. The CUR or the current user return rate is defined as the percentage of current users that return during the current week. Which is to say, a current user is someone who installed at some point of time in the past and they've been active in the app for at least the two previous consecutive weeks. So let's just say you had 100 users that are current, which means they are 100 users who were active in the past week and the week before that, then they're considered current users. And out of those 100 current users, X people returned this week. Uh, maybe they returned because of a CRM campaign and an app sale, uh, you know, or a retargeting campaign, then your cur or the current user return rate is set to be X percent. So we have a helpful infographic in the article itself. So please feel free to check that out. Uh, now the cur shows how well your app is engaging your current users or the most active users who are the lifeblood of your app that are returning every single week, week in and week out, how well your uh, app is engaging them. And that is uh, defined, that is portrayed by the curve. Uh, this helps you answer important questions like, did your new features engage these users better? Did a recent sale or communication turn them off? Uh, you get those answers. Uh, what should, what's a healthy, healthy curve? Uh, some of the more deeply engaging social games that I have seen have had a curve of 80 to 90% and more. Next up is NUR or new user return rate. This is defined as a percentage of new users who returned in any given week. Again, these are users who installed an app for the first time in the previous week and came back during the current week. Again, this is a critical measurement and different from the D D7 or D14 metrics because once a user has completed their onboarding and the early novelty of the app starts to wear off, the NUR is what reflects what happens once a user is out of the D7 window. Is there enough content in the app to continue to keep these users coming back? Uh, did your onboarding flow do a good enough job of educating the users so that they learn to come back? NUR gives you these answers. Again, there's a bit more variability with NUR, but again, some very high LTV, strong, uh, strongly retaining social gains that I'm familiar with have had a NUR of 40 to 50%. The last of the uh, three metrics is the RUR or the re resurrected user return rate. Uh, RUR is defined as a percentage of resurrected users who returned in any given week. These are users who installed a, the, an app at some point of time in the very distant past, they went away for at least a week, potentially longer, and then they came back. The important nuance here is that the RUR does not measure just how well you resurrect users, it measures how well you retain those resurrected users. Getting users back via lifecycle communications is just the first step. What is just as critical, and I would argue even more critical, is that your product be strong enough to retain these users after they come back. Again, there's a lot, uh, there's more variability in the RUR, but the strongest apps that I have seen have had a RUR of 45 to 50% on more. What is critical though, isn't uh, that you use these metrics in and of themselves, but that you track them on a weekly basis and an ongoing basis. Tracking how well your NUR, CUR or RUR change over time can help monitor the health of your app in a more nuanced way than just the DX retention numbers can. You get to see not just how your new user cohorts retain over time, but also how your current users and resurrected users retain over the same period. It's essential to understand DX 
alongside Nurkur and Rur for a complete picture of your retention metrics. For more tips, pointers, and strategies from the leading edge of mobile user acquisition, subscribe to our YouTube channel right here or check out our blog, rocketshiphq.com slash blog. Thank you.